بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. Um, our brother, our beloved brother, Abu Yusuf Khalifa, Zahallahu Khaira, he mentioned some tremendous reasons and causes and affairs that lead to separation. Undoubtedly, we have seen much separation amongst the people of the Sunnah in America in particular, and in other places in the world as well. And there are a number of reasons, underlying reasons um, that are causes for this. But before going into that, it's important that we come back and understand what does it mean to be upon the Sunnah and what is needed to be upon the Sunnah. Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his tremendous book, Usul Sunnah, he mentioned in the opening of the book that Usul Sunnah indana, the fun- fundamental principles of the Sunnah with us, atamassuku bima kana alayhi ashabu nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that we stick to and we cling to that which the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were upon وَاقْتِدَاءُ and that we imitate them. If we had to sum it up in another, any, using another verbiage, what is the reason that we find this, devi- this separation amongst the people of the Sunnah, then it boils down to differing and being in contradiction to that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions were upon. Lack of implementing that in which they were upon. If we had to sum it up in general, this is what it is, is that Salafi is not being applied. The Sunnah is not being applied. But there are some mukhalafat. There are some uh, mistakes and there are some differing as relates to the application of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that was the companions they were upon. And from the reasons is ignorance, is that you have many individuals who they are ignorant of what is Salafiyyah. Even though they call themselves Salafi and consider themselves Salafi and they may say Salafi day and night, they are confuse and have misunderstandings as to what Salafiya is. And this is due to a lack of studying. This is due to a lack of knowledge. Imam Ahmed also in Asul Sunnah, he highlights that from the Sunnah, women the Sunnah al Lazima, from the Sunnah that is binding, Allati Mantaraka Minha Khosla, from the Sunnah that is binding, from those aspects of Aqidah that are binding that if an individual were to leave a single trait from them, a single affair or issue from them, لم يقبلها, they did not accept it. ويؤمن بها, nor do they believe in it. لم يكن من أهلها, then they will not be from his people. And then he goes on to mention the rest of the book. And he begins, he says, الإيمان بالقدر خيري وشري to the end of it. على كل حال, being Salafi is not just that one makes a, a claim and he says, I'm Salafi. And then that's it, he's Salafi. But rather, Salafiya, it is based upon the Aqidah and the Minhaj. That the Aqidah the, is, 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 is sound. And it is based upon that which the Prophet وسلم, and the companions they were upon and how they used to believe. And the Minhaj. And the ulama, they differ as relates to uh, the meaning of Aqidah and Minhaj so on and so forth. But what is apparent for now, that we would like to mention from the definitions, is that they mentioned that the aqidah 
it is those beliefs and those things that are related to us internally. And the minhaj, then they are the expression of those beliefs externally, right? And there is a connection. There is a uh, connection between the two, right? There's a connection between that which is inside of a person and the manner in which they are to act. And we see that from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when he speaks about that mudwa, either salahat, salahat jasadu kullu, ala wahi al of that morsel of flesh inside of the, the, the body, that if it is sound, if it is upright, then all of the body is upright. So there's a connection between the internal and the external. So if a person is truly upon the sunnah, then you will find that being seen and shown upon their limbs. Now, there is no separation between that. And from that reason, uh, you find some of the ulama saying that aqid and minhaj, they are the same because there is no separation between them, because there is a definite connection between them. In any event, we find a disconnection a lot of times, and that is due to ignorance and not knowing what is Salafiyya. In order to be Salafi, an individual, they have to have the Aqidah of the Salaf. They have to have the methodology of the Salaf. And when you examine a lot of the issues that cause separation, when you look at them and you examine them, uh, we can ask ourselves a very simple question the manner in which things were done, or which things were understood or things were handled, is this the manner, does this manner coincide with the way of the Salaf? Does this manner coincide with the way of the Sahaba? Does this understanding coincide with the way of the Salaf? Does this understanding coincide with the way of the Sahaba? Does this application coincide with that which the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba they were upon? And um, so when we look, and, and there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a few narrations that uh, what I'm about to say is extracted from Bithnilahi Ta'ala at this time we mentioned that. But when it comes to some of the, the asbab of in, in hirafat, some of the uh, reasons for deviation, al aqdi wal minhajiya, aqdiya wal minhajiya inside of the creed, inside of the methodology, uh, then they are, but not limited to, right, the following bird and sunnah. Burd and the Sunnah to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we are away from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Secondly, Burd and Sunnah to Khulafa al Rashidin that we are away from the Sunnah of the Khulafa al Rashidin. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he outlined to us in the Hadith of Arbar bin Sariya that they're going to come about problems. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, "Wa maya ishmenkum shayr, fa sayr khilaf in kathira." That whoever lives from amongst you, they may want to see much differing. And then the Prophet ﷺ gave us the solution. He said, So it is binding a point you stick to my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after me. And to bite on to it with your molity. This is the what? This is the answer, the solution. This solution, this medicine is due to the fact of what? Of individuals going away from the sunnah of the Prophet and the sunnah of the khulafa. And that's why we see ikhilaf in kathira. That's why there's much differing. Because of they're going away from the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in the way of the, the khulafa al-rashidin. Also we find in this hadith, yani adam al hadr min al-bid'ah, an al-bid'ah, that there is a lack of warning, a lack of caution from innovation. So there are innovative principles and affairs that have crept in, the individuals they are acting upon as if it is Salafiyya and it's not Salafiyya. And this is, when this happens, this will cause, as the Prophet ﷺ said, ikhtilaf in kathira. It will cause much differing. Ma'am, also from the reasons that we find um, this type of separation, the like is jahl fi din as, as the aforementioned, being ignorant about the religion, being ignorant about what is a Salafiyya. When an individual is ignorant about what Salafi is, it will be impossible for them to act in accordance to it or to establish it. How could they? They don't know what it is. Because Salafi has been reduced, unfortunately, the understanding of what it means to be Salafi. Unfortunately, as the ulama they mentioned, uh, like the likes of Sheikh Muhammad, um, uh, Muhammad Bazmoul and others, that in many circles, Salafi has been reduced to just refutations. An individual speaking about refutations. So day in and day out, if they speak about refuting this one or refuting that one, 
then this is as to prove to the audience or to the listeners or to those who are there in a conversation with that, yes, I told him Salafi, look, I'm refuting this one or I'm talking about this one and so on and so forth. So in their minds, Salafiya it centers around or yeah, uh, 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 outlining, uh, uh, you know, um, what would you say? Uh, characteristic of it is just refutations. Now, now, don't get me wrong. Refutations have their have have their place in the religion, and refutations are very important. But what was the manner in which the Salaf? How did they utilize refutations? Was that the majority of all of their conversations, the majority of all of their dealings, and so on and so forth, or did it have its place and it have its time and it have its situation? Because it's very important. But was that eighty percent of what they used to talk about? Or not. When we look, when we examine and we look at Imam Bukhari, when we look at yani, uh, Imam Ahmed, rahimahumullah ta'ala, and their reputations, we find that they're very small in comparison to the vast amounts of benefit in which they gave to the Muslim teaching them about their religion. Alakullihal, ignorance about the uh, the deen. Another, another, and inshallah ta'ala, we can come back and we can expound upon these points, but another reason. That you find this is hubbu dunya, is the love of the dunya. So individuals having an insatiable appetite for the dunya, then you find this will lead to separation and this will lead to our humiliation. As the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the hadith, uh, that we will have a wahin, we will have a weakness put in our hearts. And when the and when the Sahaba asked him, wahin ya Rasulullah, and what is that weakness? The Prophet Sallallahu said, hubbu dunya wa karahiyat al maut. Love of the dunya and the hatred of death. And that love of the dunya and the hatred of death, even though we are numerous because they ask yeah, uh, uh, that uh, the reason we'll be in this bad situation, humiliation, people coming upon us and taking from us like they want, would that be, would that be because of our small number on that day of Messenger of Allah? The Prophet said, Let me say, but Antum Kathir, well, I can tell you, I can tell you, say, he said, No, but rather on that day, you're going to be a mini, numerous. But you'll be like the foam of the ocean. The foam of the ocean, there's no value in that, right? Um, but what will cause this uh, debasement? What will cause this? Hubba dunya, love of the world and the hatred of death. And that yani, leads to issues and, and, and motivates people to act in manners that are not correct. Well, bird on the and being far away from applying the religion, as we see, is rampant. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in many of the circles and individuals um, who are claiming to be upon uh, the Sunnah, claiming to be Salafi, you find that they are lacking a lot uh, when it comes to applying the religion as it should be applied and so on and so forth. And then this, it, you know, it, it links back to what our beloved brother, uh, he mentioned about sins. Uh, sins when sins become rampant and so on and so forth. This is not correct. Was this the way of the salaf? Was this how the sahaba they were? Right? And the last one that I would like to mention for this point at this time, uh, not returning back to the ulama, not returning back to the ulama, and also adorning uh, ourselves with some characteristics of the mukhalifin adorning ourselves with some of the characteristics of those who are in opposition, right? And all of this stems from being ignorant about the religion. But inshallah ta'ala, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll mention that inshallah uh, after giving our other beloved guests uh, some time to chime in on what was mentioned.